heading down to the famous SCG and it is balmy and warm. Never been actually, it's the first time I've ever been, so I don't even know what it looks like. It's so muggy out here. Um, it's cool, it's a cool stadium. I guess it's like small and boutique, but also like old, got a lot of history. Plenty of footy and cricket have been played there. Um, we're gonna go down a little bit earlier, get some food and just soak up. The first game of the yeah, AFL season. Got to get a swan scarf, a swan oh, guernsey. No, nah, just kidding, just kidding. No. Just, just, just getting just one of you. Oh one no, just staring down. It's all right. He's put me off. <laughs> You've actually got a Melbourne shirt on. I do. I'm hiding it for now until Clary kicks the first snag of the night. Nina and Pastor Dean, thank you. That's unbelievable. <laughs> credit where credit's due. That was unreal. That was pretty, um, Matty Robs. Yeah. Matty Robbers gave you a wing. Yeah. Went, South Adelaide boy, shout out to the Panthers, but uh, he knew, he knew, and he, he went, Panthers. That's, um, well, I take back my predictions, the Swans mean business. That's really fired me up. That wasn't a Shinada, was it? Was it? They went through. All right, we are inside the SCG for the first game of the season, and um, yeah, there's no atmosphere like it to be honest. Out the front, it was like a, a carnival like atmosphere. It was that march, um, which was something I've never seen before. It was literally an hour before the bounce, all the players running on the road. An hour before the bounce, the Swans players walked past all the like fans. Dee's out here kicking snags, and the Swans players are on the road talking to fans. That, was, that was, blew my mind. The banners going up. The crowd's filling up, it's not quite there. I think there's a lot of people outside still so enjoying the atmosphere. Currently eating a medium rare SCG 425. Undercooked. And the MCG, they're overcooked. And I love that. Undercooked. Needs another go in the oven. Um, I'm going to tip the D's. Hopefully, our big body mids can go stronger for longer. I'll tip us by 22 points. Check it. Who have you got? I'm going to get on the D's as well. Um, I think it'll be a little bit tighter than that. Maybe let's go D's by eight points. Uh, Clary will be back though. Fritter's going to kick a few. Rui's going to kick four. Jack Viney kicks our first goal of the season, getting tackled by two players, and he just stood up in the tackle, got boot to ball, and slotted it. Happily kicks the Swans third. They've had some good uh, counter attacking snags. Every opportunity that we've had is so hard. It's so contested. It's a ball up 10 metres out, top of the goal square. There's 40 blokes around the footy, and they've just had some good goals against the tide going the other way. Quarter time here at the MCG, and we trail by nine points. I don't want to go the alarmist too early, but we've kicked one goal six. And inaccuracy cost us two finals. So they did this last week in the um, in the preseason game as well. Slightly concerning, but um, the effort's there. Execution on a couple of things wasn't there, but that's because it's so humid and the ball is a cake of soap. Um, whoever can be the cleanest from here is probably going to get it done. But the Swans have started well, and we're not that far off. It doesn't feel owning territory and not converting is probably the aim of the game at the moment. All their goals have just been counter attack. Um, yeah, we're locking it inside 50, but can't quite score. Very frustrating at the moment for the D's. Ed Langdon lining up at half time. We trail by 13 points. The ball's a cake of soap. No one can grab it properly. We really need this goal, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Yes, Eddie Langdon. Come on. Bailey Fritch kicks the D's third. Three goals eight looks terrible on the scoreboard, but we're down by a point now, and we've got the ball forward again. D's are just starting to twist the screws a little bit, starting to tighten up, it's good. That is a relief. The D's have been let off the hook a couple of times now. Aiden McLean's missed one from the top of the goal square. Adam McLean makes up for his missed opportunity earlier. Lee Fritch steadies the ship, so he's trailed by four points. Blake Howes bursting off the half-back line, delivering it on the chest of Bailey Fridge. And that's a little settler. That's a little settler. We're yet to get the lead here, or 
yet to get the lead since first quarter, so we really need this next wish to Petrarca. Bursting through the centre clearance, kicks one. just once every game. It's guaranteed. Yeah. yeah look, it's guaranteed. You're gonna, if you come to the footy, you're going to see that. You're going to see track winner clearance, kick goal. Three quarter time, final points on offer. We trail by two points. We had the lead for parts of that third term, had the lead. Yeah, it's just an arm wrestle. I don't think any team's been better than the other. And it is flip of the coin sort of stuff here at the SCG. It has been getting warped out of the centre clearances for the Swans, which is very frustrating given the calibre of humans we have for that first bounce. Um, Just pointing out, the Swans kicked three goals seven their last quarter. Yeah, they could have put us they, away. They got their mix of the slippery conditions, like we said. They could have put us away. Capitulated. We've um, given up three or four easy soccer's off the ground goals this game. So sloppy in defence. Uh, yeah, it's it's getting ugly. Logan McDonald kicks the sealer. Just a horrible day at the office for the boys. That last quarter capitulation was so disappointing. To be honest, it never felt like we were ahead of the arm wrestle. It felt like the majority of the game, they were in front with that arm wrestle. And it felt like at any moment it could just crumble. Super frustrating result, I guess. Um, yeah, losing, losing finals by a kick where you kicked yourself out of it and missed opportunities is frustrating. But just getting out muscled and rolled off the park <laughs> feels more frustrating as a result. Um, there's so much I want to say. I, I feel like across the park we're too small. I feel like our defenders aren't big enough. I know May and Lever are quite tall, but. I feel like we look undersized when we burst any sort of forward line and I think down the other end we're quite small as well so um, that's a little bit worrying. Yeah. Our midfield which is star studded consistently gets flogged in the centre clearances and that's happened for a number of years that's concerning um, and yeah I don't know how, what to make about the Grundy Gorn thing I guess. Grundy did this to Collingwood last year. Um, just played the game of his life against his old side and he had a point to prove and we tried to make it work with him and it felt like he was a little bit one dimensional and potentially didn't try to come to the party for us last year so um, yeah it's good to see him play well it's just so disappointing that he couldn't find that gear when he had opportunities to do it last season so yeah completely cut completely frustrated and um, yeah, I'm going to have to wrap the vlog up there. Thanks to everyone who tuned in. I'll see you soon for some more content.